Maybe it's the way we all look like each other. Maybe it's the way we say our last goodbyes. Maybe it's the way I ache when I miss my mother. Maybe it's the way she said it's time to die. Cause up until now I've always pictured life as an endless fight with death. But it isn't true. It just isn't true. One of these days I'm gonna live each day to the fullest before I'm through. I'm gonna do it if it's the last thing I do. People didn't used to ask the doctor whether it was time to die. There was a time when old people took to their beds. When my father Max was about to turn 90, he daydreamed out loud to Della, my mother, about having all of his living kin under one roof for the birthday celebration. How about it? Too many folks for you? Oh, no, no, no. I imagine I'd like to see them all at once. So the invitations went out from coast to coast and the whole family started making travel plans. Della got on the phone to a catering company and soon strangers in white were running all over, setting up tents. I didn't know we had this kind of money. Oh, oh, leave me alone. Oh, let's pretend that the future can't hold anything over us. I want to have fireworks. Della got on the phone and hired a band. <laughs> the birthday dawned and caravans of relatives and friends arrived. A number of those traveling with children stopped to freshen up at the diner on Main Street. And so the town folks heard about the birthday party and they started to drop by. Pretty soon, the whole wraparound porch, the backyard and the front yard were teeming with, with people dancing the two-step carrying pies, hollering at kids, or telling stories on Max. Now, Della, my mother, had her children late and wide apart. My oldest sister, age 52, was a Unitarian minister. My middle sister, a kindergarten teacher, came 10 years later, and I was the surprise last child. Della had me when she was nearly 50. Now, in my early 30s, I was in my third year of medical school. The three daughters drove together to the birthday party in order to conduct a meeting on the care of our aged parents. We needed privacy for such a conversation and wide open spaces. We never discussed Max and Della without fighting like cats and dogs. A few hours from home, we pulled into a rest stop and limped into the ladies' room to splash our faces and to comb our hair. Having fixed all traces of tears, we found it possible to make up. A powerful, creative surge arced between us, and we spent the rest of the trip devising a plot, a plot to keep Della out of the kitchen and to prevent her from exerting herself in any way. We got out of the car, wearing dark glasses and feeling cagey. We pushed our way through the mob of happy guests to the kitchen to find Della, but she wasn't there. We went back through the party again searching high and low. We found Max talking about bowling with the preacher on the porch. Oh, I don't know where she is. She was just here. We went upstairs where it was quieter. We heard a radio playing crooner music down the hall. We found our mother listening to the radio in bed, wearing a new 
butter yellow flannel nightgown. Her hands were folded across her stomach. She, she looked a little peaked, but her eyes were bright. Ah, bet you were going to try to make me lie down for a little while. <laughs> well, <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Mother, said the Unitarian minister, what are you doing? I've taken to my bed. I'm not getting up anymore. My middle sister started to cry. The kindergarten teacher, intuitive and emotional by trade. Now, I never understood how she, she got situations so much faster when I was so much smarter. I tried firmness. Now, mother, now, mother, come downstairs after you've had yourself a nice nap. Oh, maybe I'm being too abrupt. I will repeat myself. I have taken to my bed. I'm 82. And, and that's enough. I want to die with all these people in the house having fun. I didn't hire a band for nothing. Oh, what will Max do without you? Oh, buck up. Now that is marriage. That is private. Oh, by the by, oh, I am pleased as peaches with you three. Oh, oh, imagine, imagine such a crowd came out of my body. It's staggering. I get exhausted just thinking about it. Della lay back on the pillows. We all but ran out into the hall. I know how to resuscitate her. Now don't you dare. Mother has a right to make her transition this way if she wants to. She is 82 years old, for God's sake. Have some respect. I slipped back into the bedroom. And I drew a chair to the edge of the bed. Turn off the radio, Jane. Let's hear the band. The shadows of leaves moved across the wall. I looked hungrily at the hands, hair, and face of my mother, of everything of her in that room. Her eyeglasses shut up in a book on the dresser coffee cup. Something inside of me set up a fitful wail. Meanwhile, my middle sister went weeping down the steps into the party. All the men in sight rushed to her side, full of concern. She told the news. Della had taken to her bed and planned to die by morning. Somebody tiptoed outside to stop the band, and my oldest sister charged down the steps and started it up again. My mother hired that band for this day. Soon, I was crowded out of the bedroom by an influx of family, and off the steps by even more friends and town folks waiting in line to pay their respects. Out on the porch, I was amazed to see there were, there were still plenty of kids running on the lawn, and and plenty of grown people enjoying the food and the cold beer and celebrating with Max. I slipped away to the peeling white door that's leaned up against the garage and I cried in the slant of it on the wormy ground. <laughs>